May of 1857, the Russian Empire may be the largest empire in the world, but it's definitely not the strongest. We are currently at war with two Caucasian countries, so we've got to deal with them before we can fix our nation. Well, now that those two Caucasian nations have been dealt with, we can focus on improving the Great Russian Empire. First things first, we've got to figure out what to do with the Caucasians. Since we defeated them, we've got to integrate them into the Russian Empire completely. Also, our economy is pretty bad compared to nations like Prussia and the UK. So we're going to make a slow recovery by repaying debt and stuff like that. But We've got a pretty sizable focus tree, and the part of the focus tree where we can do some reforms is here. But before we can continue our reforms, there are two small nations left in the Caucasus, and luckily for us, they are now our puppets. But not for long, we would soon integrate them into our glorious empire, concluding our business in the Caucasus. Now we can finally move over to our reforms. We can either go conservative or reformist. I want to change it up a little bit in this video, so I'm going to go down the reformist path. We'll start by reforming our administration system, because that's pretty vital for a nation overall. They're not only vital for our military, political figures, but also our civilians. And we've got some focuses which unlocks decisions right here for Alexander's reforms. Now that we've finished reforming our administration, we can move over to our finances. Our financial system is questionable, but after a few focuses, we completely reformed it. Also, we've got to figure out what to do with our peasants, because they are the backbone of our empire. Well, what we can do is improve living standards, starting with our healthcare. We'll reform our education system entirely and we'll also pick a minister to handle or manage our peasants. Also, we got rid of political isolation, which is a pretty bad debuff for the Russians. I was completing focuses and doing decisions to reform our education, but all of a sudden, war broke out between us and the Austrian Empire, because we had to help out our Sardinian friends in Italy. So, let's see if we can manage and defeat the Austrian Empire. We absolutely obliterated the Austrians. We were on the outskirts of the capital, Vienna, so they had no choice but to surrender. And a peace conference will shortly commence. Now I've got the Galicia conference. I don't know if I pronounced that right. You can correct me in the comments. So we can take just a tad bit of territory, but we'll go to more options, because I want more territory because we humiliated the Austrians. I'm gonna take complete annexation. Hopefully the rest of the European countries will accept. Well, the votes are counted and it was a complete failure. Well, at least we can try again. We'll go for the second best option, 
so we'll go to more options and only annex East Galicia and that Polish city. Well, at least this time we have one. We've got two states. Nice. We also wrapped up our education reforms before moving onwards to our administration. Now I said administration before in the video but I messed up. It was a judiciary. But that doesn't really matter now. We've got some decisions and events which increases our reformist support. We're not only going to continue our administration reforms, but we're also going to add urban reforms. Now, it is quite boring for me sitting back here playing in the beginning because it is quite a slow moving mod. So at least I've got to deal with two reforms simultaneously. Now we'll look over to our diplomacy in East Asia. Well, not really East Asia, but you know what I mean. Central Asia, really. Because we've got the great game where we've got to do some slow and tedious expanding in those Central Asian countries. We'll also figure out what to do with the island of Sekulin, since it's owned by no one. Well, it looks like that the Qing has crumbled and dissolved into a million pieces. On the right side, we have acquired a new territory, now known as Vladivostok. Oh yeah, this is just a side note that no one is going to get Sakhalin in this video. Maybe next video. Thus, we shall improve our relationship with the Japanese. So, hopefully in the future we can take the entirety of Sakhalin. Oh yeah, fantastic news, we have finished Sir Alexander II's reforms. So we don't have to deal with this any more. Now we can finally move over to our industrial side of the focus tree. Now we've got one vital decision to make. Well, I'm gonna choose to go down the more military side of the focus tree. Why do I want to go down the more military side of the focus tree? Well, I wanna do some expanding. It might not be in this video, but maybe next video. And it looks like the tax evasion is spreading throughout the Russian Empire. We're gonna have to crack down on this immensely. As the biggest nation in the world, we've got a plethora of resources, so it will increase trade opportunities. We're also going to move over to our railways, since this is a century where railways were popularized. So we're going to connect Warsaw and Moscow, which is a major feat for the Russian Empire. Another major feat is expansion. We're going to start by expanding in Central Asia throughout border clashes before we can actually do some real scale invasions. Well, we took a significant amount of territory with our border clash, but the territory is basically just desert and waste. Well, we've already got enough territory, we've got to manage our large and vast nation. Starting with Finland. They're not actually a part of the empire entirely, they are a puppet, but they're not integrated. We have chosen the Prime Minister, which if we go down this side of the focus tree, we will be able to fully integrate the Finns. Another important territory of the Russians is Poland. They're their own nation, as the last video and the video before that, we played as Poland. And you can see what they are capable of. But we have our attention diverted with another border clash. Well, that border clash was pretty short, but at least this time we have taken a major city from them. Oh yeah, I had to wait a few months to fully and legitimately annex our Finnish puppet. Now we have finished with the Polish people. We can now move over to Ukraine. They are notorious for their wheat supply. But actually, I was cut off short. I went down the more harsh side of the Polish side of the focus tree. So, as a result, they revolted against us. Let's see if the puny revolt can survive the wrath of the Russian army. Пошли домой. 
что я скажу твоим домашним, как встану я перед вдовой, неужто клясться днем вчера? The Polish revolt lasted a mere two seconds, but at least we no longer have to deal with any more Polish revolts in the future. Hopefully. Well, it looks like that France, Britain, and Austria aren't really happy with us crushing the Poles. Now, I don't want a full-scale war, so we're going to have to temporarily agree with their terms and conditions. Now that that's out of the way, we can move over to the army side of the focus tree. The army side of the focus tree is pretty sizable. That's why we have got an extremely colossal time span to complete these decisions over here. Now, unfortunately for the army reforms, they had to be cut short because we had to focus on our administration reforms and blah blah blah, stuff like that. Because we unlocked new focuses, like giving women's rights to actually learn stuff. Like, you've seen Miri Curry, right? I think that's how you pronounce it. She accomplished great things, so we're gonna do the same. We'll also do some judiciary reforms, uh, economic reforms, basically anything which has to affiliate with our new focuses. Well, the conservatives aren't taking these reforms lightly, but we will silence them with this singular decision, making our support 100%. Now that those reforms are out of the way, finally, we can move back to our military. Since we really haven't been focusing on our military at all, it's extremely outdated. So we're going to change stuff like our uniforms, because our uniform defines our pride and stuff like that. Wow, the Russians in our timeline were notorious for using quantity over quality in their army as the human wave tactic, I think that's what it's called. I actually forgot. Um, but why don't we do both? We're going proof, quality, and quantity. Well, what are we going to do with Alaska? They are a pretty large territory and our only territory in North America. Well, we're going to keep them because we don't want to give up any territories at all. We've mainly been focusing on our men and basically planning everything. Now we've got to put that into action. We're going to go down this side of the army focus tree, gaining military factories, improving railways, getting resources, etc. Which, over time, will drastically help in this video and next video. And these two final focuses would conclude our army reforms. Alexander II in this video has accomplished quite a lot, increasing stability, uh, industry, army, army quality and quantity, etc. But territorial expansion will happen next video. Now I split this video up into two because I want to make you guys decide what countries you want me to declare war on in the next video. You guys can decide by commenting down below or going to the community page on my channel and just comment what you want. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned.